Could Sean Payton really make a return to the New Orleans Saints in 2023? We got all of that and a little bit of land yet for you on today's episode of Locked on Saints. You are Locked on Saints, your daily New Orleans Saints podcast, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. What is good, Houdat Nation and Houdat family? Welcome in to another episode of Locked On Saints, your daily podcast covering your favorite team, the New Orleans Saints, part of Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks so much, as always, making Locked On Saints your first listen of the day every day. Don't forget, we're free and available on all podcast apps and on YouTube as well. And I'm your host, Ross Jackson, at Ross Jackson Nola on Twitter, your New Orleans Saints expert, credential member of the media. You can find me every day over at CrescentCitySports.com, USA Today, Saints Wire, Tuesdays a lot to the NFL, and here with you every single Monday through Friday on Locked on Saints. And today's episode of Locked on Saints brought to you by our friends over at Prize Picks. Prize Picks is daily fantasy made easy. All you have to do is pick two to five players, choose whether or not they're going to come in at more or less than their Prize Picks projections. You get those right, you go up to 10 times your entry and first time users can get a 100% instant deposit match of up to $100 by simply using the promo code locked on at prizepicks.com or on the prize picks app. Tell you more about them later on today. But first, we're going to get started today. It's all Sean Payton, all episode here, because there was a very interesting article that recently dropped over at NOLA.com by Jeff Duncan talking about the possibility of Sean Payton returning to the New Orleans Saints next season in 2023. So we'll discuss what the article actually was talking about what it potentially means. We're also going to break down kind of the case for wanting a Sean Payton return, but there's also a little bit of a case against it that we'll break down as well. So we'll hit every bit of all of that all throughout today's episode. As always, we're working on our two a days as well. So we'll have another episode for you later on today. This one kind of blends the line here between present and future. So I hope you don't mind uh, starting off today with this conversation. But The big thing to pay attention to here is what does this article actually mean? What does it say? Let's be very clear. What this article is not saying is that Sean Payton is definitely returning to the New Orleans Saints in 2023. I've seen some folks ask questions that are specific around like, is this true? Is this false? There's not really any true or false to what this news presents. What this news is presenting is that there is the possibility And that some people do feel that Sean Payton would consider a return to the New Orleans Saints. And if the New Orleans Saints are smart, that they will also consider a return for Sean Payton. Now, there are a couple of different things, like I mentioned. Either you think that's a smart thing, you think that's not the smart thing. We'll break all of that down. But there are some folks out there that Jeff Duncan spoke to that have knowledge of the situation, that are close to Payton, that even described the New Orleans Saints as the number one option for Sean Payton to return. Now, I'm not going to lie to you. I have heard from some folks that the Saints would be interested in Sean Payton returning, possibly, and that Sean Payton would consider a return to the New Orleans Saints as a part of his many different possibilities, right? Again, that's not reporting anything crazy. It's just that, yeah, the Saints are going to be on the list if there is an opening for a new head coach. That would mean uh, kind of moving on from Dennis Allen, which we still don't know would be the case for the New Orleans Saints. However, if you get an opportunity to get back the best coach in your team, in your franchise's history, that could probably have some type of a major impact on the decision that you make going into the 2023 season, especially when you're finishing out right now, at least at the end of the 2022 season with four games to go, four and nine, at the very bottom of the NFL's worst division, sole ownership of last place, which is where No one thought the New Orleans Saints were going to be looking at their roster over the course of the offseason, the idea of continuity, cohesion, all of that, the the star players that they had, how much the rest of the division was set to struggle, which they have. Your best team in the division is six and seven right now as the Tampa Bay Buccaneers drop their game big time against the San Francisco 49ers and seventh round draft pick Brock Purdy uh, yesterday or on Sunday It's a little bit of a crazy scenario in terms of what the New Orleans Saints are versus what we expected them to be. And that alone could potentially force this team to really, truly evaluate what their options are over the course of the offseason. And it looks like there is some potential that Sean Payton could be one of those options. Now, what would it take to get Sean Payton back? Because remember, he's the one that stepped away from the New Orleans Saints. There was all of that sort of tampering stuff going on with the Miami Dolphins as well between him. Tom Brady and Dolphins ownership. And then you go beyond that and simply look at what do the New Orleans Saints have going into next season? They have a quarterback problem. 
They don't have a first round pick because they advanced their first round pick so they can get Trevor Penning, who they haven't seen just yet in terms of you know major uh, opportunity. But we'll discuss that later on today in terms of the three players that deserve the you know most important kind of like looks over the course of these past four uh, these next four games. But there's a lot of question marks around who this New Orleans Saints team, well, first of all, is and has been versus what they can turn out to be going into 2023. Now, the positive side of all of this is that if you're Sean Payton. Or if you, let's say it this way, actually, if you're the New Orleans Saints, trading away Sean Payton's rights means that you're probably going to get some draft picks. But are those draft picks worth actually keeping Sean Payton as well, i.e. the draft picks that you would receive for Sean Payton, would you give for Sean Payton? And if so, then that kind of makes a return for Sean Payton in 2023 worth the New Orleans Saints while, especially if he's able to bring in maybe one of those top flight quarterbacks that are going to be on the market over the course of of the offseason and then potentially look to the draft to maybe build and develop, which I think you're going to have to make some changes on the offensive staff if you want to be able to develop a quarterback because the coaching staff that surrounded Sean Payton and Sean Payton really never showed a true ability to be able to uh, develop a rookie talent, right? A, a young guy. They didn't even try for the longest time because they had Drew Brees on the roster, though. So how much of that is you only got a couple of swings at the thing versus how much of it is actually like an inability to get it done? So you'd have to figure all that out. But I do think changes in the offensive staff would help you in terms of making all of that happen. So when you look at it in terms of what the possibilities are for a Sean Payton, there's certainly a door left open in terms of his return. Look, the Saints still own his rights. Mickey Loomis, as Jeff Duncan uh, observed, is his best friend in the business. There's a lot of different things that could bring him to New Orleans. And another part of that could even be what Gail Benson has to offer. Could the Saints go as far as what we've seen around the NFL, what we've seen around the NBA, as even offering stock in the team or even partial ownership or you know shares in the team, in the organization, as a sort of additional, com- uh, uh, um, I'll say comp- compensation, I guess. Uh, to bring Sean Payton back. And Sean Payton now has the opportunity to come back and say, okay, you've seen what life is without me. So let's talk about stepping up that contract and stepping up this pay so that we can get this back on track, right? So there's kind of a little bit of flexing that Sean Payton would be able to do and coming back in terms of negotiating all of that as well. But as we mentioned before, there's a case for it. Here's a case against it. We'll start with the good. What would be the pros of bringing Sean Payton back? Well, the easiest one is, of course, trying to get the winning culture, first of all, to hang around, but more importantly, redevelop it after this season as well. We'll break down what that looks like as we continue on with today's episode of Locked on Saints. Today's episode is brought to you by Turo, T-U-R-O. Turo is the world's largest car sharing marketplace. And with Turo, you can find exactly the vehicle that you're looking for wherever you need it uh, from a community of local Host. That means that you can browse a huge selection of cars that fit just about every occasion and budget all across the US, the UK, uh, Canada, as well as Australia now as well. So let's say maybe you're looking for a, uh, an SUV or a family vehicle for a family vacation. They got you covered there. Maybe you want a luxury car for a special event, holiday with the holidays around, maybe some birthdays, things like that. They got you covered there. Or maybe you're just looking for an affordable economy car that's going to help you get from point A to point B on a quick trip or a work trip or something like that, they've got you taken care of there as well. Mini Turo hosts will even deliver the car directly to you, which means you don't have to mess around with the lines at the rental car places and all of that other stuff. Every trip is backed by liability insurance. Terms and conditions and exclusions apply. Forget boring rental cars. Find your drive at Turo. Dot com. Today's episode is also brought to you by Audible. Audible is releasing a new football podcast, a whole slate that we know that you're going to love. And that's why you can actually find a sneak peek of Think Like a Champion available right now over on Locked On Presents. It's the newest episode over there for you right now. Think Like a Champion is a brand new podcast from Russell Wilson and Audible. Russ is a champion on the field, and he's also somebody that you know, off of it is doing a lot of great work as well. Grind in the path to greatness. Those are all things that are synonymous with NFL quarterbacks, Russell Wilson in particular. Each episode does feature interviews with Olympic gold medalists, uh, NFL stars, business leaders, all of that to kind of swap stories and share some of the proven mental techniques that they have used to help them get to becoming some of the world's most elite performers and cross the finish line and beyond. Head over to Locked On Presents today 
for a sneak peek at Think Like a Champion or catch the full series available wherever you get your podcasts available everywhere. Now, Audible, get in the game. All right, family, continuing on with today's episode of Locked on Saints. We've set the table. Sean Payton could potentially be considering or would consider a return to the New Orleans Saints as opposed to heading over to another team. And honestly, the New Orleans Saints should absolutely consider it as well. We're going through the good before we get to the sort of argument against Sean Payton returning to the New Orleans Saints in 2023. Appreciate you as always making Locked On Saints your first listen of the day every day for your second listen. Go and check out Locked On Sports today. All the news that you need around the world of sports, including uh, the biggest uh, biggest stories, takes of the day, highlights, all that good stuff that you can find as we take you beyond the scoreboard and behind the scenes over at Locked On Sports today. Find it wherever you get your podcast and on YouTube as well. All right, so let's break down the case for a Sean Payton return. This is actually kind of where I'm aligned. I'll tell you that straight up front. If the New Orleans Saints have the opportunity to bring Sean Payton back, if they know for sure that they're not going to move ahead with, with Dennis Allen, then I think that they should do it, right? I, I think that if, if, if you've made the decision, or if you do make the decision, that you're not going to move forward with Dennis Allen as your head coach, that Sean Payton should be one of the top five guys on your list. I've broken down kind of my list before, guys like Eric Bieniemy, Brian Flores, of course, also Sean Payton on that list as well. There's guys like Ben Johnson, who another shout out to the uh, the Saints Twitter podcast guys, Lions offensive coordinator. They love him. I think you would too. So there's a lot of different routes that the New Orleans Saints can absolutely go, but Sean Payton shouldn't be excluded from that list. And I personally almost think, honestly, he might be one of your top two, top three options if there is interest in having him back. And if he is truly interested in returning, I'm going to continue to caveat that because we don't know, right? We don't know what Sean Payton wants. We don't know what the New Orleans Saints want. We can take a guess. We can hear what people are saying and stuff like that. But until it happens, we have no idea. So I would say that, that that is a route that I would absolutely understand and support, honestly, the New Orleans Saints in going. I know that there are some hard feelings around Sean Payton. And I also know that there's kind of lost capital if you don't trade Sean Payton's rights. But that's when we get into what this sort of case against bringing him back is. Let's talk about the case for. The New Orleans Saints that we saw in 2022, actually, you know what, let's go back further than that. The New Orleans Saints that we saw in 2021, four different quarterbacks, 50 plus different starters, NFL record number of starters, still finished with a winning record, COVID stricken, injury stricken, all of that, whole bunch of stuff going on with that franchise, that team throughout that season. What made the difference for them was coaching, right? And I think we've seen that now that we've seen the context of what it was like without Sean Payton's coaching in 2022. A lot of us expected like, oh, okay, well, you've got the continuity. You've got sort of the, the you know, there's a consistency from year to year that's remaining with Dennis Allen at head coach, Pete Carmichael still OC. You've got familiar faces at co-defensive coordinator as well. The roster is still very familiar. We saw some really nice things from Jameis Winston during his year uh, in 2021 with Sean Payton and the New Orleans Saints. There were a lot of things there that we really liked. And then of course, M Michael Thomas was coming back. They drafted Chris Olave. There were a lot of things, oh, they added Jarvis Landry. There were a lot of things that made you feel like this New Orleans Saints team would actually be better off in 2022 than they were in 2021. Turns out we were wrong, right? The New Orleans Saints can't actually even match the record that they had last year at this point uh, in the season. So with that being the case, you can kind of already see where the benefit of having Sean Payton is. If that was kind of the major difference is coaching, 16 years or going into a 16th year minus a 2012 year of shorthand, of decision making, of demand for excellence, of high standards, those things wouldn't have changed going into 2022. Clearly somewhere, something shifted, right, in terms of coaching. And so I think that you get a better coach if you have Sean Payton back in the building. And that's no slight at all to Dennis Allen, but like we've seen it, right? Dennis Allen was 8-28 and 28 before he took over as a New Orleans Saints head coach. He's 4-9 and nine so far since he's taken over as New Orleans Saints head coach. I think we can technically give him 5-9, and nine, right? We think about the interim game that he called a 9-0 shutout win against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. But also, Dennis Allen was the head coach under which the first shutout of the New Orleans Saints happened in over 330 games. You had a 13-point a, a lead uh, away from home against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers that that ended up dropping off. You've had questionable decision making across, you know, quarterback, across, uh, uh, you know, even just position players, skill position players, when they're on the field, when they're not on the field, all of these other things. 
And all of that doesn't fall down to Dennis Allen. Some of that is offensive coordinator. Some of that is other places. But one person is the figurehead. One person is a spearhead for the entire organization when it comes to the coaching staff. And so a lot of that is going to come down on Dennis Allen. That's one of the reasons that Sean Payton, who basically made a lot of the decisions, right? There was a a, a symbiotic nature in which Sean Payton worked with the rest of his coaching staff to make the most informed decisions. But overall, he was the guy, right? And that worked. That worked extremely well for the New Orleans Saints. And what was their goal coming into 2022? Their goal going into this year was to not rock the boat, was to not change things, was not to shake things up. And instead, that they felt that they had a winning formula and that they would be able to maintain that even with Sean Payton gone. Clearly, they weren't able to do that. So then you bring Sean Payton back as the only missing piece, right? Is the real only missing piece going into this and then try to get a better quarterback or not better quarterback, but try to improve your quarterback situation in the meanwhile, because you're going to be able to do that with a guy like Sean Payton, his clout, his offensive system, his scheme, the way that he supports quarterbacks, whether he supports supports, uh, skilled position players, all of that. You're able to attract somebody with that. Right now, what about the New Orleans Saints as they are, minus a Sean Payton? What about them attracts the type of quarterback talent that would improve their quarterback situation? There's not a lot. I mean, there's Chris Olave. There's a the potential that Michael Thomas returns. We'll see what happens to Jarvis Landry. Does he get, uh, does he get you know, re, re-signed? Does he come back to New Orleans? Can't even really use Alvin Kamara as that chess piece anymore, not even, because the, not even at the fault of Alvin Kamara, mostly at the fault of the offensive system that didn't utilize him at all, it felt like, in 2022. And there's still four games left, so there's time to prove that they could, but he's got three touchdowns in the season so far, and they all came in the same game. And that's just wild to me. And I think it's, it's wild to you too. And I'm sure it's wild to Sean Payton watching all of it. So I do think that that's where you probably see the biggest benefit of bringing Sean Payton back, right? If they got the opportunity to do that, if Sean Payton was interested and if the Saints could convince him to stay, since they technically still own the rights to his, to his contract, bringing Sean Payton back means you have a better football team. Like, let's just say it outright. And that brings back a winning culture. That brings back a guy that everybody really like got behind, everybody loved in terms of the organization and everything and made it all happen. And like I mentioned, like there might be some, let's say animosity, right? Because he stepped away and all that. But I think all of that would be quickly forgiven, right? Nothing fixes solutions or fixes problems in the NFL like winning. And if you get Sean Payton back, and you maintain the talent that you have on this team, which you almost kind of have to anyway because of contract restructuring, what the con- what the salary cap situation is, all of that. You kind of have to maintain a bunch of this talent anyway, which is fine. It's actually kind of a good thing. Then that gives you everything that you need to have a winning team in 2023, although you might still see some changes on the coaching staff. Coming up next, what's the argument against bringing in or bringing back Sean Payton? Some of it is that animosity that we discussed, but We've also found out that continuity doesn't necessarily work for this team. So is bringing Sean Payton back just another step into continuity and therefore another step in the wrong direction? We'll break that down as we continue on with today's episode of Locked on Saints. Today's episode of Locked on Saints is brought to you by Prize Picks. Prize Picks is daily fantasy made the way that it should be. Told you a little bit about it earlier. Now let me give you a little bit more of a concrete example. Let's say going into uh, Sunday's matchup between the New Orleans Saints and the Atlanta Falcons, Chris Olave, who's on the verge right now or on pace to break the rookie or the franchise, New Orleans Saints franchise rookie uh, receiving yards record. All he's got to do is average a little bit more than 63 yards per game. So let's say 63 and a half is kind of the projection for Chris Olave and receiving yards. You think he comes in at more or less than that up against the Atlanta Falcons? Let's say 37 and a half rushing yards when it comes to Alvin Kamara, more or less. Let's say 215.5 passing yards for whoever the quarterback is going to be for the New Orleans Saints in that game, more or less. You pick those and then bam, you're done. That's all that it takes. You can choose up to five, but it really only takes you like 60 seconds to put an entry in and you get those projections right. And all that you would end up doing is winning money. It's that simple. So go and check them out. It is prizepicks.com or the Prize Picks app. You can get a 100% instant deposit match, by the way, of up to $100. All you have to do is head over to the app, download the app, or head over to the website and use the promo code Locked On. It's going to make it so that if you deposit $100, they'll match $100. Deposit $50, they'll match $50. It's that simple. It's promo code locked on at prizepix.com or on the prizepix app today for your 100% instant deposit match of up to $100. Let's get it, Houdat Nation. Wrap it up today's episode of Locked on Saints with a look at the case against a return 
of Sean Payton in 2023. Now, in the last sort of bit, we talked about the case four. We kind of laid that out. And I kind of spoke a little bit about how like I would advocate for this. What I mean by that is that I would advocate for the return of Sean Payton if there wasn't, if that's a decision that the Saints were already ready to make. And if the alternative was like moving forward with the status quo, right? But I, I am a little bit on the side here of Thanks, Sean, for everything that you provided to the organization, but going to move you, get the draft capital, and then head in a new direction. It's clear to me, and this is my biggest case against the idea of a return of Sean Payton, which actually doesn't have anything to do with Sean Payton at all, is that you have to be willing to change, grow, evolve, and, and go a new direction in the NFL. Every year, every five years, every 10 years, the game of football is different in some way or another. It's a little bit more quarterback friendly. It's a little bit more wide receiver friendly. It's a little bit more, um, you know, this, that, and the other. Like, there, you know, it's, it, it's more of a run game right now than it is a passing game, like more rushing yards in the past, you know, this year than most years, all these other things. So, so what I'm thinking within all of this is like my biggest piece of advocating for the idea that like, okay, maybe this isn't the right choice for the Saints is if they decide to go in an entirely different direction. It feels like your two options going into this offseason are either moving forward with Dennis Allen or bringing back Sean Payton. Like As of right now, it it still feels very much like this team, if Sean Payton is not, your return of Sean Payton is not the option, that they'll just move ahead with another year of Dennis Allen and then make decisions based upon how a second year performance goes with a different quarterback, with a different coaching staff, kind of with with Dennis Allen's guys. And a big part of making that work would be trading Sean Payton and his uh you know and his rights in order to get draft capital back. And you kind of have to make that decision before anything else, right? Because here's kind of your worst case scenario. And this is maybe my other sort of case against the idea of trying to retain Sean Payton is what if you spend time and invest resources in trying to get Sean Payton to come back and then he chooses not to? And worse than that, he chooses not to coach in 2023. Then you don't get the draft capital. You're kind of out of options. You're late into the coaching search at that point. What are you going to do? You're going to go back to Dennis Allen and say, hey, buddy, sorry, we didn't get the first option. So we're coming back to you. Like you, you can't do that, right? So like that's kind of the other piece to all of this that feels like maybe not the best choice to spend time on something that's not for sure. You would have to know that this is for sure from the very beginning. But again, I mean, look at some of the options that are going to be out there this offseason. Guys like Eric Bieniemy, Brian Flores, Ben Johnson, these guys that we discussed earlier and that we've discussed in, in, in previous episodes, like if you decide to go in a different direction at head coach, there will be options that will allow you to do that. Now, there's no guarantee that you or you're able to hire any of them either. There's no guarantee that this team moves on from Dennis Allen over the course of this offseason and that they instead give him a second year. But you'd almost rather that than to be in a situation to where you've effectively told Dennis Allen, we don't want you. We want Sean, but Sean's not willing to come back. So I guess you're here again. Like, really? Like, is that really the route you want to go? Is that a good choice? Like, I don't feel like that is. So if the options come down to Dennis Allen or Sean Payton, and you know 100% you can get Sean Payton back, then sure, that's where I would advocate for the idea of Sean Payton. But the case against is pretty strong in case you swing and you miss, in case you spend all of that time, invest all those resources, invest all of that time, fall behind in the potential head coaching search. What does that look like from other head coaches that are out there? Like, you know, you still going to date somebody that's hung up on their ex? Like You're really showing the rest of the NFL that that's who you are in that case. And I know that there's all of the connective tissue. There's everything that's there in terms of like your best friend in the business, the all of the things that we discussed earlier, healthy organization, all those things. But those things weren't enough to elevate Dennis Allen. And so that's something that you kind of have to look at and say, okay, is that a symptom of Sean Payton not being around? Or is it just time to go in a different direction? And you'd almost rather go in a different direction instead of waiting to find out that answer. Because that's the other piece. What if you invest actual you know, stock in the organization and you, you know, give up shares of the organization, stuff like that, and you pay Sean Payton you know, way more money to come back and finish out his deal or extend him beyond what was originally going to be through 2024, uh, and then it all falls apart still. What if that's not 
the piece that was reparable, but instead the piece that would have been reparable was addressing the entirety of your 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 vision, where you were going, your direction. And instead of making that change, you go for the the other change, the the, the almost the easier change, and try to rekindle the old flame. But that doesn't work either. Boy, then you're really out of it, right? So I think that's the other piece that is kind of the case against bringing Peyton back. The other big piece is obviously what can you get for Sean Payton, right? It, what is his trade value? We don't really know for sure. We know John Gruden got two first, two seconds, and 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 money. Um, is that the starting spot for Sean Payton? Is it a little bit less than that? Is it more than that? I don't think it's more than that. But you know, you you kind of look at those pieces in terms of what the value can be, and say, okay, moving Sean Payton for those pieces is of greater value than not getting those pieces and keeping Sean Payton. Is that the way that the organization feels. If so, then that kind of answers your question right there. But you can't go down the road and start to figure it out and then pivot, right? You kind of have to know that right now going in. So it's such a tough scenario if that were something that was actually going to be possible for the New Orleans Saints and for Sean Payton. But you'd almost rather say, I know I certainly feel this way in terms of all of the different possibilities that are out there. Sean Payton was awesome for this team from 2006 all the way through 2021, from the very beginning to the very end, outperforming expectations. And thank you for that as an organization, but for that organization, I think going in a new direction, even if it takes another year, right? Even if you go with another year of the status quo and then head in 2024 in a different direction. I, I still think you're probably in a better scenario that way because you're growing, you're changing with the NFL. We know that one of the things that always made Sean Payton so special was his ability to grow, evolve, and change, but you can't grow, evolve, and change with the roster still being made into the image, right? You have to grow and evolve the roster too. So can you get Sean Payton to come in and buckle in without a franchise quarterback, without a first round draft pick, without the ability to really be able to steer this in the direction that he would want to steer it in immediately? It, it, can you convince him of that? I don't know. I don't know, right? I don't know what it is. Peyton said on the podcast that he did with Tom Brady and others that it's about the people, it's about the relationships, it's about all those things. And New Orleans has the people, it has the relationships, it has a city that loves him and it has a city that he loves. That's that's certainly true. But you also have to be able to win games. You also have to be able to put things together and say, here is the package that if we just add you then all of a sudden you're a Super Bowl champion again. Do the New Orleans Saints have that? I don't know. I feel like they have to rebuild that as they move forward, but that might just be me. So we'll see. You know, We'll see the way that this all pans out over the course of the offseason. Again, I think that in limited choices, it makes perfect sense. But in a world in which you have all of the choices available to you, maybe there is a reason to pump the brakes on the idea of a Sean Payton reunion. So I can kind of go either way with this. I, I wouldn't feel that the Saints made a bad choice or the wrong choice in either one. Maybe you do. Let me know what your thoughts are. How would you feel about a Sean Payton reunion? Uh, but as of right now, the reality is that they, there's still four games left in this season. And we'll get to exploring those four games in our second episode later on today. Who are the three New Orleans Saints that have the most to gain from these final four games? And why is Jameis Winston at the top of that list? We're going to break all of that down as we come back with our second episode of Locked on Saints. Appreciate you, as always, for making us a part of your day, a part of your routine, and of course, for making us your first listen of the day every day. For your second listen, make sure you go and check out Locked on Sports today as well. Appreciate you saying yes to me and the show. As always, if you see me, say hi. If you need anything else around your New Orleans Saints in between these episodes, make sure you follow me on Twitter at Ross Jackson, N-O-L-A. Hit me up. Let me know how the family's doing. Let me know how you're living. Let me know how you're mom and them. And trust you, that nation, I'll holla at you.